I had a letter this morning from a guest who, uh, I won't read his name out. Um, they basically got a tour, um, a private tour. And by the way, this is, I'm not reading this up or making it up as people with 15 screen names will say. They took a tour um, and it wasn't from the ship and the taxi driver didn't get them back to the ship on time. Now, the program, the fun time, said what time they had to be on board. They arrived 20 minutes after sailing time, and uh, this was a, um, a, a water shuttle port, a, a tender port. It was Belize, and there was no more water shuttles, right? They'd finished, um, and this, this lovely gentleman is extremely upset with the captain um, for not waiting, and... Um, He's written to me and to our president and to two or three other people in absolute, you know, disgust that we didn't wait for him. Now, do we recommend you take a ship excursion? Yes, of course we do. Not only from a revenue, let's be honest, I'm not going to lie, but also from in places like Belize because of things like this. And what an awful feeling it must be to stand on the pier and see in the distance the ship's gone, Right. And it actually happens more times than you would imagine, not just on carnival ships, but right across the industry. Now, I, um, a lot of people ask what happens when that happens. So let me just take you through it. Now, first of all, the ping machine, which is not called the ping machine. Remember, you used to put your card, it would go ping, ping. Doesn't do that anymore. Although if you tip the security guards, they will go ping. For, no, they won't. I'm joking. Don't, don't. <laughs> That's an absolute joke, right? Or oh, he's a dollar if you go ping. No, 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 no. Anyway, it's called C entry now. The machine used to go ping um, that has now taken a vow of silence and morphed into an iPad. Anyway, um, that's how we check to see who is on board. Now, when we see people are missing, so when those people were on the pier in Belize, and um, I wanted to, in case he's watching this, and I'm going to write this in my uh, reply. The, the sea entry machine tells us who's on board and who's missing. So those names are then announced through the regular PA system. So they go through the PA system and uh, an announcement is made. And uh, that is when Natalie goes, shut up. No, no, don't say that. She wouldn't do that. Would you, Natalie? No. Um, those names are announced on, uh, on the PA system. And um, sometimes they're on board because occasionally... The card didn't register. There may be an error, but 99% of the time it's because they're not on board. If there is no answer five minutes after making the page, a second announcement is made this through the general emergency system right through the um, right through the ship. So everybody can hear it. So, for example, the, the guests and I always used to do these announcements myself because I always felt that there should be one voice. That's back in 1492. Now, guest services do it. So they go, bing bong, would guest John Fatima, please contact the guest services desk immediately. Contact number is 77,000, whatever it might be. Now, if that announcement, there is nobody made, nobody uh, answers, um, then another page is made. And if nobody answers that, then preparations are made so first thing that happens is a guest services representative accompanied by a security team member will go down to the cabin to make sure the guest isn't inside then they will look through the cabin and see if they can find their passports and they will also use the safe master key if um, the passports might be in there again there's more than one person it's all registered and uh, stuff um, and normally the passports are in the safe and then they retrieve the passports from there. Now, if the passports are not found, then it's assumed that the guests have got them or their official ID with them. If we find the passports, they are given to the ship's agent. We have one in every port who looks after um, our needs while we're in port. And then uh, the passports are given to the ship agent and then the ship's agent will assist in helping uh, with a hotel and a flight and repatriation to the ship and yes this is all at the guests charge we don't pay for that but we are there to offer sympathy 
and experience. Now, I know uh, from for this particular gentleman who's upset that we left without him, I know for the captain, he will have waited as long as he could. None of our captains want to leave behind. I mean, do not think that Fabio is on the bridge going, eh, hey, because uh, hey, we have two people behind. <laughs> Happy days are here again. Oh, this guy. No, they're not happy. They're extreme. None of our captains want to leave people behind. So my advice is simply this. Take a carnival excursion. If you're going on a private excursion, make sure, make sure that you're going to be back to the ship in plenty of time. But if, again, if you if you take an, an excursion you're from the ship, you're not going to be looking at your watch. You're not going to be thinking, oh, am I going to make it? Because if it's an excursion that's back late, we will not leave you behind. It is simple as that. Now, this gentleman is asking for a full refund of the cruise because of this. And he's written to me. He's written. And I, I just wondered, do, do the planes, do airplanes w wait for people? I don't, I don't think they do, do they? Not that we should compare ourselves to the, to the nautical, the, what's the flight one called? Aeronautical, the planes. I guess people write to flightcritic.com and ask for stuff, but um it's uh it's really just uh, a sad thing we don't want to leave anybody behind so here are my three simple steps if you can take an excursion from the ship if you're going away from the main downtown area safe secure never leave without you number two if you're going ashore Right. If you're going ashore, take a photocopy of your passport with you or your or your, you must have your ID with you, of course. If not, you're leaving your passport on board, leave it in the safe because that's when we know where to look if we need to find it for you. And three, most importantly, look, check, triple check what time you need to be back on board the ship and not the time the ship sails, but the time you need to be back on board. And if it's a water shuttle, what time is the last water shuttle leaving from the ship? Okay, those things will keep you safe, right? Um, follow the rules, that's right, and planes don't work. There we go. <laughs> okay, Mary. Are you really? Congratulations, that's wonderful. Right, um, now, uh, we've got to crack on. Um, I also have to do... I haven't done these videos for a couple of weeks, for, for two reasons. Number one, it's really busy, right? Uh, obviously, I have all sorts of questions to answer and it's really hard when I go back overnight and the list is endless and um, I haven't had one for a long time, so I do apologise for that. Um, I think the most I ever did was 11, but one is, is today is, I hope, the start of me doing more. I also, because this is all off the cuff and I don't really have time to think, sometimes I say things I probably shouldn't and I have to do apologies. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, about apologies? There seems to be an emerging culture on social media that punishes people for apology, for apologising. I never know whether to apologise or not because sometimes I get told off more for apologising than if I didn't. I think sometimes apologising in social media offers my critics a, a new target. Did I apologise correctly? Was John sincere? Should we make John apologise again? And does it also confirm you're feeling guilty about something? Interesting, isn't it? But um, the other day I wrote something and it, all it was was, well, let me read this thing out here. It says, okay, I've been reading your Facebook page for only a few weeks now. Uh, your comments are interesting, but refusing to call the Royal, Ca Royal Ship by its full name instead of the Something of the Seas was both unprofessional and you should apologise to me and to people who cruise on Royal Caribbean. So um, this was when I wrote the Something of the Seas rather than the, the ship which is written here, which... In whatever it is um, and the only reason I didn't write it is well, I'm really, uh, fantastic amazing cruise line but do I really want to give their ships free advertising on my page no but he wants in a public apology 
So, uh, it's very, it's, apologies, public apologies are very, 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 very hard to do, right? And sometimes you need to do it. You do. I once had to apologize on stage. Do you want to, have you got time for this story? I had to apologize on stage to 15,000, 1,000 people. I'd walked out, this was way back, because I can't remember what ship it would have been. Magic, maybe, when the ship was brand new. Can't remember. Anyway, I walked out at the Welcome Aboard show and I did my own Welcome Aboard show. It wasn't, it was, you'd have been so bored at my Welcome Aboard show. It was just me interviewing guests and making them famous. It was none of the dancing and all the high tech stuff. It was me, a microphone and a, and a spoon and a piece of string. <laughs> God, how boring. Anyway. I walked out of the welcome board, so and with a few seconds on stage, I was like, hello, welcome aboard, blah, 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 blah. And from like the third or fourth row, I heard, why? I can't say a really bad swear word that begins with F. I ignored it and I carried on. And a minute or so later, an even worse word followed really, really awful. So anyway, I stopped the show and asked for the lights to come up in the showroom and... I said to the man who was shouting these words, that if he did it one more time, he'd be taken out of the showroom security and not allowed back the entire cruise. And I used a few heckler rebuttal lines, which I won't bother you with here. And he left. He and another person left. Anyway, there were no more incidents during the show. And it was a little bit later on the next day when a guest came up to me and told me that their son was in the show and that he suffered from this awful, awful thing called uh, Tourette's. And I pretty much ridiculed him in front of the of front of a thousand people at the show. And I felt awful. I felt absolutely awful. So I stood on stage and I explained the situation and I apologised because that was worthy of an apology. Right. Um uh, Public apologies are really good. I say the word sorry a lot. It's a good get out of jail free card, especially if I've messed up. But I'm going to be a little bit more careful because I think when I do, I'm going to say more things that offend people, I think. And I don't ever want to do that. But these days, it is virtually impossible to say good morning without someone being offensive. So uh, to um, Mal, M-A-L, uh, uh, who was upset about my comments about the uh, calling it the something of the seas. I do sincerely apologize and I will make very, very, very uh, hard. I really will try hard uh, not to do next time a ship from that fleet comes up to give it the full name. And as you mentioned, not say something of the something of the seas, but call it by its full name, the ship you're on, which, of course, was the incontinence, independence Independence of the sea. I'm sorry, Mal. Hey, John, I think you got yourself in deep heat. I think it's best you say goodbye because uh, people will complain about you. You come to my office, uh, we have a cappuccino and talk about it. Uh, uh, because I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling like a pasta. It's just me. I have no friends. Uh, it's just me. I'm a, like a pasta. What do you mean, Captain, you're like a pasta? I have no friends, John. It's just me. I'm a pasta. What do you mean you're a pasta? Hey, John, I'm a kind of lonely. Kind of lonely. Thanks for watching.